cast in such movies as Lipstick, Manhattan, and Star 80. Now she stars in a television series called Civil Wars. Uh, she also has a current film entitled Falling from Grace. Please welcome Mariel Hemingway. <laughs> So embarrassing when a woman come out and dwarfs me, you know? <laughs> like, hello, Miss Hemingway. How are you? How tall are you? I'm 5'10 and a half. But it was very funny. I walked out of the house and I hadn't seen my hair. So because the guy was doing my hair and I was like, okay, it must be fine. So I walked in to say goodbye to my kids. And my hair was like up to here. <laughs> and I said, as if I'm not tall enough as it is. So I was pounding it down Spread in the down limo. <laughs> But that's nice. That's nice to be that tall. I'm glad oh, yeah. you wore your pumps and, and, <laughs> and dealt with it all. Uh, when did you first become taller than everyone else? Uh, <laughs> uh, like, were you this tall teenager? Oh, I was tall even before that. I think I was tall... When I, 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 the first memory I have of really being tall was my first kiss. Mm. And there was this boy I was going out with we were out in the playground, and he was rolling this snowball. Mm -hmm. And he kept rolling it on. I didn't know what he was doing. I was watching, and I really liked him. I think I was eight. And, he, and then he proceeded to climb up on the snowball, and he said, come here. And he kissed me, you know? Aww. And it was so sweet. I mean, I thought he was very secure. I thought, what a wonderful thing to have done. And I, I wish more leading men in Hollywood would be so secure. <laughs> I'd when probably I go work back to, a lot more. When I go back to Cleveland, I have to try that. You know? <laughs> Roll up the little snowball. <laughs> Excuse me for a minute. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, well, spider? So, so, did somebody spider. say your, your nickname was Spider? Well, as a kid, yeah. Lanky, long, Legs. gawky, don't know what to do with yourself kind of nickname. <laughs> yeah. yeah but look, look how you grew into your height <laughs> so well. Now, is the man in your life tall? Yeah, I mean, he, he's not, you know, not seven feet tall. He's normal height. Yeah, he, and, and he's secure. Well, yeah, he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> I must say, he does walk out. You're going to wear heels, he says. <laughs> I say, uh-huh. Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> yeah. could, I, could I fawn over you just for a minute? It must oh, be real fawn, cool. Fawn. <laughs> it must be real cool being the granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway. I mean, for, well, a lot of pressure, too, because, you know, you can't say in literature class, it, it ain't be like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's Ernest is, you know, I mean, isn't that oh, cool? It is cool. It is very cool. I mean, I didn't know my grandfather. It's cool, and like you said, there's a great deal of pressure. I mean, I went to... Ernest Hemingway grade school. Oh. And it was oh, so God. hard. I mean, I know this is, oh, yeah, so hard. But let me tell you, every time I wrote my name, they'd go, ooh. And I'm like, I wrote my name, guys, you know? <laughs> it was no big deal. So there was a lot of, you know, sort of, I never felt very comfortable in English class to hand in a paper. It was like, oh, either yeah. judge too harshly or thinking it was great when it was, like, not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because, like, I mean, He's, he's a legend. I, my, I have an uncle, Cyrus, who ran numbers with Don King. That's my biggest claim. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, but, and you're like Ernest Hemingway's granddaughter. Yeah, that's it's deep. exciting. Yeah, it is. You can't make an English grammar mistake. No, <laughs> you, know? you can't do that. That's why we stay away from writing and doing things like that. Yeah. I'll just stay with the acting. If I can be, like, even remotely as good at that as, you know, he was in his little finger. Yeah. <laughs> when did you decide you wanted to act? I think it was really after I'd done Manhattan mm -hmm. and I worked with Woody and I just had such a wonderful time and it was sort of this whirlwind experience and I just thought, that's it, that's what I want to do yeah. at 16, you know. What is Woody Allen like? I've never met him, never... He's terrific. He's a wonderful... I mean, I don't know him well anymore. I haven't seen him... Yeah, I don't see him that often. Uh, but he's a wonderful person. He's, he's, he can be very funny like he is in his films and he's very serious and he's... He's, uh, he really, I would say, is one of the few people that I would call a genius that I've met mm. as far, and brilliant. Present company excluded. Work. Of course. No, I, I know. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you have to kind of think of him sexy? Um, well, you know, when you know Woody, he's so 
somebody so smart and so funny, mm -hmm. it's like they, it, it doesn't, you know, yeah, he's sexy because he's so interesting. He's so, his insights on life are so wonderful. So that it, that makes him sexy. And I think that's, that's his appeal, you know? Yeah. So when you try to find the ideal man you look for, you know, it's not like Cosmo articles. It's not buns and eyes. You look for intellect and wit. Oh, buns and eyes ain't bad. Though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Got to have a sense of humor. Yeah. I think that's real. Yeah. But... Let's take a quick commercial and come right back. Quickie. We'll be back. <laughs> Um, let's see. We should talk. We should do business a little. We, I just can't sit and talk about your grandfather for the rest <laughs> of the night. Um, let's talk about the television series first. Absolutely. Civil uh, Wars. Civil Wars. And, and let me tell them when C Civil Wars, uh, the next episode is March 17th at 10 o'clock p.m. ABC. Tuesday night. It yes. starts on Tuesday nights. We start up on Tuesday nights. We've been down for a couple weeks because mm -hmm. of sweeps and Olympics and things. And we come back strong and it's a great show it really is it's a wonderful show it's a wonderful show to be involved with the writers and producers are fabulous and we've got some really fun things that we deal with yeah well i play a divorce lawyer and along with peter Anarati, who's my co-star and uh and it's fun we're just having a blast doing it because it's like everybody sort of it got this rap as being very dark and depressing but it's not i mean we deal with some very funny funny things because people come in you know, or they write these episodes with people who have these incredibly strange <laughs> problems. I mean, in, in our pilot, the, one of the guys was an uh, Elvis impersonator. Mm -hmm. And his wife wanted a divorce because she didn't mel marry Elvis. She, she married Murray Seidelman. And she wanted Murray <laughs> back. And he said, but I have no, I'm not anybody when I'm Murray. I'm somebody when I'm Elvis. And I mean, it, so we deal with things. <laughs> OK, it sounds strange, but it was really good. <laughs> But we deal with some really funny, f funny things. I mean, the the courtroom and divorce arena is a great place for people for for drama and comedy, mm -hmm. you know. And the, and the sort of the humor in people's sort of tragedy is what we tend to find. Yeah. Which is, it's it's been fun. Yeah, your life is just perfect. I mean, <laughs> really, you you got the show, you got this movie, which I've heard great things about, and I was shocked because. Not only is John Cougar Mellencamp in it, but he also directed it. He did. Is it his debut as a director? Yes, it is. Uh, a film director, he di directed some of his videos. Mm -hmm. And it was a wonderful experience. We met it in uh, Indiana. He plays a country rock singer who goes back home to Indiana and, and sort of wants to, f I don't know, see if, he, see if he can go back home. But I'm really, the, his, I play his wife, and I'm really the reminder that that's not where he came from really in, in, in his soul. I mean, it's what he wanted to get away from. And um, he, he has a w wonderful relationship with a, with a woman played by Kay Lenz. He, he, that kind of these women in his life keep guiding him and showing him the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really a, a, a kind of a woman's film in a way mm -hmm. from, from that aspect. We get a lot of strong comments from, from women. It's, it's a great film. And it's, I had a wonderful time. Uh, the clip that we have now, should you explain this before I roll it? Well, um, he has been, John, my who plays my husband, this rock star, has been very bad. He's been having an affair with his first love uh, back home in Indiana. And I know about it. I don't know who, whom he's having an affair with. And I'm, I'm fed up. I don't play a victim, unusual, usually I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to him, listen, don't treat me like this. And, and it's basically, I've, I've had it with his behavior. And okay. so that sort of sets it up. <laughs> OK, Sandy, kick it. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. I mean, you're a parks, aren't you? Two women are better than one. Three are probably better than two. And on up to whatever the parks limit is. Anyway, I'm going. I have certain obligations to fulfill, and I don't want to be your doormat. Your father made a pass at me today. Big shot. Um, so how many of you have won?
wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the movie's out there, and it's uh, getting a lot of good reviews from critics. So go check it out tomorrow. As soon as you wake up, go line up <laughs> and check out Mariel Hemingway and John Cougar Mellon. We'll be right back.